So, uh, I'm Jay Bryant. Um, I'm the Cinder PTL. I work for Lenovo as our cloud architect in the Lenovo Cloud Technology Center. Um, and I have been on OpenStack for like six years now. And I've also been on Cinder most of that six years. So, it's, it's, been, a, it's a, been a fun ride. Glad to continue to, to do that. Um, also involved with Upstream OpenStack, which um, or Upstream Institute, which uh, Lenovo is proud to sponsor and has done for several years now. And um, you know, uh, looking at getting more involved in cross-project things with Ironic and Nova, and you know, keeping Cinder growing beyond the bounds of just its uh, little storage area. So Cinder is the block storage project for OpenStack. It came out of Nova back in the Folsom release, I believe it was. Um, and what we do is we provide a place for storage vendors to um, put drivers to make it possible to interact with their individual storage backends um, and then uh, you know, create volumes that serve as a place for the persistent data that's made available to VMs. So like compared to Swift or where you have large objects that are, are shared, this is your data that's closer that you need to move from instance to instance and get to more readily um, and, and have it persistent. Can you give us a use case or a customer that's got a specific use case? Yeah, so I mean a, a general use case um, is for if you have a, say, like a, a database application that you would uh, need to have the, the backing data that goes with it on high-speed storage that you can snapshot, back up, you know, make sure that it's always there, but don't necessarily need to have your instance, you know, persistent. Then you can, that's an application where you would use You'd run your application in your instance, but it would access the data that's actually on the, the backend storage that Cinder manages. Um, and the important thing for us to remember is, you know, some people are like, well, why would we put another step in the data path? Um, we're not in the data path for most operations. We just manage getting the data set up and the connections made. So, um, you know, this was. One of the things that's kind of become apparent for Cinder right now is we've reached the feature level that um, vendors and customers are expecting. So we're not adding a lot of features. Um, and people are like, well, that means that Cinder is not as healthy. And I said, no. It means everybody's using Cinder and we're into a bug fix mode. Um, we actually had, <laughs> we, we had an opportunity for direct user feedback. And, you know, we got, users there and ask them what do we need to fix and they're like eh, it just kind of works which has to make you feel good as a project that it's like hey things are working um, so so Stein was um, a relatively quiet release uh, a couple of the things that were exciting is you know we've been talking about multi-attach in these interviews for how many releases um, the RBD driver is now, um, so Ceph now supports multi-attach. Um, so that's a big step, you know, Ceph is our largest, is the most widely used driver. Um, and we've really seen an uptake from the community maintaining and enhancing it. Um, and not just from one vendor, um, we had people from CERN working on adding uh, deferred deletion so that you know, if you want to delete a volume, but uh, the administrator wants to have the deletes happen at like an off-peak time, they can set it up so that, you know, when you delete a volume, it holds it, and then when things are quieter later, actually clears it. So that was another feature that was added. Um, we met the goal of Upgrade Checker um, for the Stein release. That was a community-wide goal, and we got the piping in place for it, and we got a few checks put out there. We're still trying to figure out how to use it. Um, but I think that's going to be a, a <laughs> this is true, um, 
uh, but I think it's going to be a good feature in the future because it will allow us to hopefully catch before you know uh, a, a environment is upgraded things that could possibly go wrong. Um, the checks I added were, hey, we've removed that volume driver. Um, so if you're going to upgrade and you're using it, we should probably stop you first. So things like that. And I think we'll figure out other uses for it as we go forward in train. Um, other words, it was a lot of user experience type improvements. We're trying to make Cinder more friendly, easier to work with, consistent experience between um, Cinder client and OpenStack client, um, that kind of thing. So that, that's kind of where Stein was at. It was a good just keep moving forward and, and improving uh, our support as it is. It sounded, it sounded like it was a streamlined cycle. Yeah, you know, so one of the things I looked at is um, I compared the last two have been, have been very much bug fix focused and clean up and improving our processes. The last time we'd officially done that was back in Okada. Um, which, and so I looked at the activity in the last two releases compared to Okada, and it's, it was comparable and consistent. So, you know, it shows that the community is working and doing what we need to do for that. Um, though now as we go forward, I, I think with rack scale design and VME drives, that kind of thing, we're likely to be seeing mm, some new features come along, use cases we haven't thought of yet. Um, the good news is I think we're ready for Edge. We've got availability zone support in, um, and people have been now using that in Stein. I think that went in in Iraqi. Um, and that's the main thing that's needed there when you start talking about Edge applications, is the ability to know that, you know, my storage is at that location. So if I'm going to make a volume, I need to create it there so I can attach it to my instances there. So that's another thing we're ready for. Um, We'll see, there's still so much discussion around that whole topic, we'll see where things go. So what's coming up in train? Um, train's kind of continuing the, the um, UX improvement and bug fixing. Um, the, the big thing I really hope we're able to get in is um, improvements in our capabilities reporting. So each backend driver has a set of things they can do their capabilities. Uh, for instance, um, replication, uh, compression, um, what their QoS settings are, those sorts of things. And um, right now, unfortunately, if an administrator, so we use all of those to create volume types, which then is the user says, I want a volume of this type, and it goes and matches the, the specs that they put in there, the capabilities of the back end. Right now, a um, administrator needs to either go read the code or the documentation, if it exists, those sorts of things, um, and get it so that we have, so that they know what that back end does, and then create their volume types, which is obviously not a great user experience. Um, we, we, put, we, we actually discovered that we put the framework in to do this a while ago, and just nobody's using it. So now we're working on, um, we've kind of come to an agreement of how we're going to do this, and we're going to have um, the reference uh, drivers, LVM, Ceph, NFS, to start with, implement examples of it, and then encourage all of the vendors to follow that example with the final goal hopefully being that it would get advert, you know, you can either do a list and see everything you have available in your environment, or we'll push the list up to um, Horizon so that you get a drop down menu and you can select what items you want that are available in your environment to create your volume types. So that'll be a much improved user experience um, if we can get there. I don't know if we'll get all the way there in train, but hopefully we'll get close. So that a lot of that functionality hangs over from before we were maintaining our documentation and making sure uh, that, that we were doing a good job of it. So this actually is one of the other things we're working on now that we own our documentation is to um, 
go back and read through it and find where there are gaps that, you know, it's just because we haven't gone through and done a whole review in a long time and get that fixed up. So we came out with a number of to-dos in this uh, PTG to go clean up documentation. So we're learning. <laughs> um, what other fun things do we have coming up um, in train? Oh, generic uh, backup driver support. So, um, you know, not everybody, everybody has storage of some sort, not everybody has a backup system. So this will allow um, people to use, you know, a, another volume driver to access storage and use it as their backup source. So, you know, for instance, they get a new shiny SSD based storage device and they've got their volumes on it then they can take their legacy device and slide the data over to it to back up their volumes there. So that, um, the patches, Avon has been working on that for a while. The patches are out there. I think we'll be able to get those in place. We, we have much more stringent documentation requirements now. Um, we want to use the upgrade checker better in this release. Um, we've got uh, other improvements coming around a lot of it is, is cleaning up old code that we found that we're not using anymore just to make it easier to maintain. Um, so, you know, we'll kind of see what, what we learned during this release as far as priorities go and, um, you know, hopefully have another successful uh, period of, of bug fixing and stability improvements. So, the good news is that, you know, um, as I looked back, over the last four or five releases, we still are a very diverse community between, you know, Lenovo, HP, Huawei, NetApp. We have people participating from many different companies, even Red Hat. <laughs> um, so we still have the diversity there. We've got a good brain trust in people that have been with the project, you know, three to five years or longer. Um, but we've also brought fresh blood on. Um, we've added three new cores during the Stein cycle, which was really great, including um, Brian Ross Mehta coming over from Glance. So we've got experience from another storage technology coming over, which has been very refreshing and brought new ideas to the group, which I, I'm excited about. Um, and also diversity in time zones. Um, a couple of the new people that have joined as core are in, uh, you know, in APAC. So we're getting a stronger base that hopefully that we can get more participation from APAC since we have people in that time zone on IRC interacting um, and being able to support them. So, you know, people have been asking, how's the health of Cinder? And really, I. I, I feel good about it still. It's still a good, healthy project. Speaking of, I have two questions. You can choose how you want to answer them. <laughs> Speaking of health, um, how do you feel now that Summit and PTG are co-located? <laughs> yes, how do I feel? <laughs> uh, um, so this is day seven for me. Yeah. <laughs> Started with Upstream Institute last Sunday um, and have been going for a week. Um, this, it, it's been a long week. It's been very productive. And the good news is, is we had a number of things that in the forum we were identified um, and we came up with solutions and we were able to schedule time during the PTG to really hammer it out and resolve it. So. From that standpoint, um, it, it's good, and, and I think that aspect has been productive. The Cinder team was getting a little surly at the end of the day yesterday, um, so people were getting tired. <laughs> um, so I think it's been a very long week for people. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, you know, I'm, I'm assuming in Shanghai will be co-located again. I, I'll be honest, I'm a little nervous about going to Shanghai. Why? Which I know it's silly because my company is, you know, my team's based over there. I should be totally comfortable with it. But, and it's weird because I've been to Japan, but I felt I understood the culture better um, 
being in karate for 10 years beforehand and okay. stuff like that. So I knew the culture, the Chinese culture is still kind of mysterious to me. So that will be, that will be interesting. So from a linguistic, cultural yeah. standpoint, it's kind of... But at the same time, we'll get to meet with um, people that we haven't been able to meet with before, who haven't been able to travel. Um, I, I think for the health of OpenStack in general, reaching out to that, that uh, region is essential. Um, so I'm kind of excited about that and hopefully maybe, I, I come in, every time I come into a summit or PTG, it's kind of the, okay, we're doing this again and by the end I'm re-energized and excited about what we do and where we're going. I'm hoping maybe we can share that with the people who haven't had it before. Um, so that part I'm looking forward to. Um, I think we may schedule things a little differently. Um, awesome. If it's co-located, just to make sure that we use things that we could utilize the forum to get started and finish in the PTG. Um, so during this release, I want to think about what are the things that we need broader input from and that we can get people interested in in the forum and then, you know, pique their interest and pull them in uh, at the PTG. So, so that's one other thing that I think will maybe, I'll take as a lesson learned from this event. Um, and then we'll see where we go from there, if we keep co-location or whatever. Um, for Cinder, we've still continued to do mid-cycles. Um, our team, well, and we're talking about adding Zoom meetings because we're really more effective when we meet face-to-face. Um, but we will be doing a mid-cycle um, the week of August 20th, 19th, 20th um, in, uh, at Lenovo again in Raleigh. Um, so I'll be hosting that and we'll use that as kind of a time to make sure that we've got all our priorities put together and that we're ready to go into um, the release for, for training. Um, we're actually, we used to do kind of middle of the week so people could travel on either side, but we got feedback that it's easier to do it at one of the ends. So it's going to be the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. So the last three days of that week um, so that we can continue to work face to face and make sure that we've gotten the things we wanted to get done during train done. And then get the train out of the station. <laughs> oh, I, nice. This is Jake. Hi. Hi. You've got a Cinder sticker on you now. Yeah. I know. You were one of the community. So awesome. Do you have any final thoughts you'd like to say while you have a puppy on your lap? No, I think I, think I got everything out that uh, <laughs> I've been thinking of right now. Um, you know, it, it's... Just it's it you know it's been really nice to have a week to get back connected with people, um, and that you know, and to welcome new people into the community. There's been a number of new people here. Um, it was really nice that we had, uh, well, we had a full room for Upstream Institute, so we had a bunch of people that uh, were there and um, learning. And I think one of the other fun things. Now you want down, don't you? You just want down. You were just indecisive today. Um, the other cool thing was I had, I had the number of people from Boston or Sydney or whatever that were in the Upstream Institute sessions that came up and thanked me, who are still contributing and still active. Um, that made me feel really awesome that, you know, the community's growing and that there's, there's, it's still growing, there's still people coming in becoming part of it and that it's, you know, something that, that means something to them and to all of us, which is really cool. Yeah. Something special. Yeah. Still is. <laughs> yeah.